What is up and welcome back to a full day of trading. So this is going to be episode 6 and the markets over the past couple of weeks as you probably may have seen is that it's been a little bit indecisive. We've had you know long opportunities, short opportunities and it's been one of them where the market has been in a range in a corrective period for the past two or three weeks really which is obviously due to a lot of the situation going on with the Russia and Ukraine, what's going on right now with that. So as that's escalating <clears throat> and as that was developing, we just did a, li a little bit of obviously buys and sells both sides and price has just been indecisive to a certain degree anyway. So there's been a couple of times I'm going to be honest with you where instead of having like a clear long narrative or a clear short narrative of something what I usually do is like, you know, monthly, weekly, daily, four hour downwards from there and just really start to build that narrative of, okay, Am I looking for shorts? Am I looking for longs based on the trends, based on the higher time frames? But with this, there was a couple of times where I just really just didn't really have too much of a narrative to be honest, because price took the the previous lows out, and I'm talking in terms of the daily chart on something like Euro dollar. Let me show you. So on something like Euro dollar, let me just um, turn the brightness down. On something like Euro dollar. As you can, I'm sure you can see here from this, price has taken out this low quite aggressively, right? And then we've had that really aggressive pullback. And at that point, that's obviously looking for, I'm obviously not, not looking for buy straight away, but that's buy signals coming into the market. But then we've had this essentially higher high, but it's a, a liquidity grab. So notice how it's just literally just a wick above that previous high. We haven't had a full clear close. So for you know a good while, I was kind of, a little bit indecisive of right okay you know going back and forth a little bit and being like right I'm looking for shorts and looking for longs um, but at the same time I just kind of was patient there was a couple of times where I could have avoided a couple of trades because I think I was on the wrong side of the market but once again that's just experience and it's because of that whole period we was in so something to really take forward and learn from that whereas normally I'm very clear on the direction because of the narrative that I built the the understanding and just piece in the picture of the monthly, the weekly, the daily, the four hour, the one hour together. Um, whereas this has been a little bit tricky for me, I'm not gonna lie. So yeah, something to really learn from, take forward. And yeah, just a small blip in the uh, overall curve of the journey. So looking forward to taking things forward from here. The market looks like it's starting to show a little bit more direction, I'm not gonna lie. Um, we've had another clear, well not a clear break of the low. Essentially it could be, a, clusters at the liquidity ground as well but I'm still seeing short opportunities until the market tells me otherwise so yeah looking for potential shorts on a lot of the majors right now um, and I'd obviously just trade the three pairs so I can see what develops but overall there isn't really too many trades to like you know look over or anything like that um, whether I take a trade to the net today or not is remains to be seen I'm just really being patient at this time and see more develops. But if we get a trade, I will, of course, update you and let you know. In the meantime, whilst I'm waiting for trades and whilst I'm cracking on with other pieces of work, I'm gonna play this clip from a couple days ago that I jumped on with a mindset coach with. So we had like a little back and forth interview of talking about tilt. So I think it's gonna be really helpful for you guys because tilt is one of those things that a lot of people go through. I've had that in the past as well, multiple times. And it's one of those things that I think shows up in every trader's journey. People have different ways of coping with it, addressing it, overcoming it, but it's something that can always crop up to a certain degree and it's important to recognize the first signs, the first triggers of tilt, understand what your triggers are, and then put things in place to essentially overcome that. So I'm gonna play this clip. We're gonna be talking about tilt, which is a very important topic, so pay attention and let's get into it. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about tilt because as you know, Pat, tilt is a very important topic and it's not actually a technical trading related term, it's more so a poker related term. And it's something that traders go through. You know, I would say the vast majority of traders go through it or at least struggle with this at some point on the journey if it's not a regular thing that crops up time to time, like it is within my journey as well. So what things would you say number one triggers tilt? And then how do we mitigate that for traders watching this video? Yeah, I think this is such an important thing to, to cover, Bamba. I know I've experienced tilt in my own journey um, and I work with or have worked with hundreds of traders that I know the main reason they come to work with me is because of the tilt or the emotions they experience after they 
lose and after they win as well. Um, one of the most common reasons I've seen tilt exists and straight, uh, traders really struggle after they take losses, especially, I did a little bit of a research thing um, recently where I found that, you know, traders risk 1%, maybe a little bit less, half percent on each position. So the loss of money and percentage relative to their overall capital size isn't actually that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. It's just 1% of overall capital. And I came to realize like, why do traders react so heavily to some trades and not others, even though they're only risking 1% or losing 1%. And what we came to realize through, you know, working with hundreds of traders is that the traders who experience tilt the most and have the strongest emotional reaction to losing, especially are the traders who, before they get into a position, are setting fantasies and unrealistic expectations on the position. They're sitting, waiting for Eurodollar to sell off and they're saying in their head that this position, Eurodollar, will be the one that gets me my funding account. This is the one that will, you know, get me 10% for, for, for the month. This is the one that uh, will help me have the social status as a trader because I can share it in my community and people can think I'm a great trader. And what they do in their mind is they project these fantasies and unrealistic expectations onto the market and now when they lose the position, they not only lose how much they risk in the dollar amount, but they also lose all these fantasies and unrealistic expectations that they initially project onto the market. And what I found is that that is the painful part. The losing of the fantasies is what's extremely painful. Now, the great news here is we have control over the expectations and fantasies we project onto the market. And we have a, a control over not setting unrealistic expectations and not projecting fantasies onto the position before we get into that position. So first and foremost, to answer your position, uh, your question, um, the biggest reason I've seen for strong emotional resentment towards losing is because of those fantasies traders impose onto the market before they get into a position. So what I encourage every single trader that I work with, you know, through 12 week challenge, through performance coaching, through even some of my free resources is instead of setting an expectation of what you perceive the outcome to be in that position, that's an outcome-based decision you're making. Set a process-based decision or a process-based expectation. Have the expectation that, all right, the market is aligning with my trading plan. I'm going to take this position because the market aligns with my trading plan. I know if I took a hundred, if not a thousand of these positions, I have an edge and I'm going to end up profitable by the end of the year. So you go from an outcome-based unrealistic expectations nobody knows what's gonna happen next in the market to a process-based decision and a lot of the tilt mitigates because now you have more balanced realistic expectations before you get into the market so from the get-go it's one of the most easy changes i know how to pass on to traders traders can literally make that change right now and develop that self-awareness on their expectations before they get into a position and significantly lower the amount of tilt they experience as traders this is very important. Like you said, it's almost a system in place, having that system in place so that when yeah. it shows its head, shows its first signs of, of occurring, then you can put that system in place and execute that very flawlessly. Because I have the same thing, like till something that creeps up maybe once every four or five months, I'll kind of need to check myself, sit down, make sure that I'm maintaining great performance. And it's just something natural that crops up from time to time, but I've become better at recognizing it. So before it could have taken me two or three months to even recognize it was even happening in the first place. Now, I think the last time it occurred, it took me probably a week, two weeks. Now if it happens again, I know I'm gonna I'm gonna overcome it in like a week because I've got a process, because I've got a system in place to overcome it straight away. So I have something called a, a recovery strategy. So if tilt show, you know, if tilt starts to occur and I recognize the first signs of tilt. That recovery strategy gets executed straight away and then everything else will mitigate that tool so and, and i love that i love that because i one thing i promote to traders as well is you need to be prepared for the worst case scenario you need to have processes you need to have risk management procedures and contingencies in place especially when you go for funded accounts when you trade more and more capital you need to be prepared for the worst case scenario so having those types of things the risk management procedures you have in place are invaluable for traders right and another thing that popped into my mind on tilt as well bamber is that i think a lot of traders have a negative connotation to being emotional in the market or going on tilt right and your emotion you'll never be able to get rid of your emotions 
And I encourage traders to switch the mindset of emotions are bad, I need to get rid of them, to my emotions are feedback. They're literally guiding me and they're giving me necessary feedback to make refinements, right? And your emotions are giving you a greater awareness of yourself. And it's more so about understanding that and learning how to manage them than it is to get rid of them. So having those processes in place to understand and have the self-awareness to understand what's going on and understand when you have unrealistic expectations before you get into a position, you're going to be emotional, right? And then having the processes in place, like you said, to, if it does pop up, learn how to manage it and actually address it um, and do it very systematically and very, you know, very step-by-step -step with the process. I think that's key. And if traders just implemented that into their trading, a lot of the results will go up, a lot of the stress will go down. Yeah, that's very, very true. And something that I recommend for traders to actually implement, like we've just talked about there, is create your own recovery strategy. Whether that's, you know, it could be, everyone has to be self-aware in how they operate and what their individual tilt profile is. So I definitely recommend sitting down with a notepad and pen and just getting clear about how you operate in tilt. You know, what is it like? Do you go in on emotional swings? Like, what is the cause of that? Get clear with that. But once you've got that put recovery strategy in place, it could be one step, it could be two steps, it could be three steps. Something that you actually operate, a system that you actually execute, once that tilt shows its head, to then overcome that, to then mitigate that. And I think you'll find that super helpful because I've applied that over the past six months and it's been so, so helpful. I just feel a lot more confident that it's going to crop up from time to time. As soon as it does crop up, you can test it, refine it, improve it, get quicker at the skill itself. And then you can obviously have the opportunity to then scale capital in the future. And I think that's the most important thing, approaching things from a scalability point of view. And that's so key. And now you're not, you're not fearful of going on tilt. You're not worried about going on tilt because you know you've got a process in place to deal with it as well. That's so key as a trader. Um, the other thing that I see very consistent with tilt bamber is that traders who don't have a clear trading plan, a clear edge, you're more susceptible to being emotional. Right? There's this whole debate, is trading technical, is it mindset, is it 90% technical, is it 10% you know, mindset, is it 10% technical, 90% mindset? And my answer is it's both. You need, to have, you need to have strong technicals, you need to have a clear trading plan, you need to have certainty in your trading plan, your entries, your exits, and your risks. Because once you're certain in your trading plan, uh, what happens is you can now take a loss and you're comfortable doing that because you know that it was aligned with your trading plan and you know you have an edge there still. So I find that a lot of the emotional losses and the tilt come from when traders don't have a clear trading plan and they don't know if their trade was good or not because they have nothing to compare it to. They've got no solid trading plan to compare it to. So if traders go in and create a clear trading plan where they know exactly what they're looking for, if they go into trades with process-based, realistic, balanced expectations, and if traders put in place, like you mentioned, risk management contingencies and procedures to manage the tilt when it does pop up, they're gonna be in a very, very powerful position to manage their emotions and manage tilt when it does pop up. 100%, and I think that's an important step that most people overlook. Even put it in your yep. trading plan. Within my trading plan, I've got the recovery strategy. So within my trading plan, I've separated into the, the mental game and the technical game. Within the mental game, I've got that recovery strategy dialed in. I've got it there. So if that happens, perfect. Let's execute that system and then see how things go on. You know you can overcome it from that system. It's so important to have that in place. Love that. Well, yeah, thank you, Pat, for coming on. Do you want to give your social medias a quick plug? Like, where can people find you if they want to know more about you and maybe your course and this and that? Perfect, man. Well, first and foremost, thank you so much for having me on. Um, it's always nice to come on here and share value with the audience. Um, what I would suggest is people check out my YouTube. They just type in Pat Bailuni on YouTube, Pat B-A-I-L-O-U-N-I. Uh, -I -I, um, and I've got my trading mindset. I've got about 140 videos of just value, trading mindset value. Um, and I think traders are going to get a lot of practical insights and application from that. They can implement their trading to see um, next to immediate results with that. Um, I've also got my Instagram where you can see a little bit more behind my personal private life if, if you're into that. So I've got my Instagram, which is Pat Bay Looney. Um, I've got my YouTube, Pat Bay Looney. I encourage people to just check those two out. There's a lot of free value on that YouTube um, and you get to see a little bit about uh, a little bit more about me on my, on my Instagram. Um, so that's really where I, d I direct people. Perfect. And one more question before we finish is, 
if someone's watching this right now and they don't want to essentially apply that mindset or they don't think it applies to them, what would you say to that person? Um, I had my own personal experience with, uh, uh, with funding, picking up six figure investment before the prop firm days were around, right? This was where you had to go off and do it yourself. Um, and I went through an experience where it didn't go to my expectations. Right. And that was really the wake up call for me in terms of, I need to learn this mindset stuff. I need to have some sort of psychological and mindset understanding my trading because that loss of funding impacted not only my trading, but every single area of my life. So my hope is that people just kind of listen and they get an idea to start implementing the trading mindset stuff. Because if they don't, they're more susceptible to losing funding. They're more susceptible to trading negatively impacting their relationships, their work, their schooling, their health, every single area of life. I don't think traders need to go through, you know, losing funding accounts, significant drawdowns like I did to learn those. I think traders can be and just recognize that, you know, if I do implement some mindset and principles, which won't take me many much a day, it doesn't take much time a day, very simple, highly actionable mindset principles like I've shared on my channel, like you should on this channel, um, they can implement that into their trading and they can significantly lower the probability of trading negatively impacting their life, their relationships, their health, all areas of life. Um, and that's really my message. Um, I went through that personal experience of losing funding and going into drawdown. So you guys didn't, you don't have to, you can go in there and learn the principles, implement them, and they'll save you a lot of money. They'll save you a lot of time, save you a lot of energy and stress as well. Save you a lot of stress. Love that. Love that. Anyone who wants to check out Pat, I highly recommend to do so, especially the free content he has on YouTube. It's incredible. I watch it all the time. Definitely recommend checking that out and really pay attention to the principles that he's teaching as well. Because it's through personal experience and through clients that he has that he knows what he's talking about. Really pay attention to what he's preaching. So thank you, Pat, for being on the channel. And I'm sure I'll welcome you, welcome you back on at some point again soon for the fourth time. But um, thank you for spending your time investing that into the channel. I appreciate you, Bamba. Thank you. Suck me up, smoke, breathe me in and let me go. Filling the lungs inside you. And the black and eyes make my way into your mind. Just to know what you knew. Christmas every time we start locking eyes up. Right guys, it's a little bit later on now. I'm breaking headphone holders as we speak. Um, I've just finished up at the gym. So that was a solid session. Haven't taken any trades today. Um, and it is just one of those things. So, you know, literally right now, I'm just being very patient. Like I said before, the number one focus for me is protecting capital. In this whole situation of Russia, Ukraine, and what's happening right now, you have to tread a little bit cautious. What I've learned throughout these times is that you know, the newbies in the market and the newer traders are going to be the first to really, really jump in and try and take advantage of moves. You know, the ones who are more experienced and more have more intuition in those times are just the ones that step back, protect capital, focus on that as the number one priority goal um, in times of high volatility, in times of high uncertainty, and just really just wait for the market to sell before then getting back involved. So, you know, that's really something you can take away from this video. If you are feeling the need to jump in through, it, through these times, just focus on the goal of protecting capital because that should be the number one aim in these times instead of just rushing through and trying to take trades. Because when the whole situation occurred March 2020, I was kind of, I'd never been through that experience before where the market was a little bit erratic, high volatility. I just kept the foot on the gas throughout the next couple of months and it didn't really do me any good. So me learning from that time, now I'm like, cool. Wait for the market to settle because it will settle. It's only a matter of time and then get involved then. There's no rush for the markets. Um, for the last few weeks, I've barely taken many trades to be honest, but it's just been one of them situations. But I'm doing the right thing. I'm protecting capital and we'll come back when the markets are, are clean. So still doing the same things, market up every day, uh, analysis, making sure I'm ready for trades and I'm only taking high quality setups in this time. And I do anyway, anyway. Um, 
but there's no need to rush, let things develop and uh, go from there. So I hope this video has been helpful and I hope you have a great rest of the week and I'll speak to you in the next video. Peace out.